I'm your host, Evangelist Anita, and it is August 6, 2020, folks. We're here, the month of August, off to its start, okay? We, we see this, this end time race, if you will, and the months have all joined in. The year, clearly the year 2020 have all joined in, and we're living in the last days. I, I, you know, I believe we're, you know, we're looking... You know, well, I, you know, I believe that, you know, you know, all of us are, are, you know, are running the final lap before the day of the Lord. And so, uh, it, you know, just know that it's not God's will that any man perish, but that all come to repentance. It's not God's will that you enter into eternity without the, you know, without the forgiveness of your sins that was made possible through the shed blood of Jesus Christ over 2,000 years ago at the cross of Calvary. Uh, so let it be that you're saved, that your name has been written in the Lamb's Book of Life, that you're headed for heaven, that you've denied hell, and uh, that you're eagerly, eagerly awaiting for the, you know, for that day, for the second return of Jesus Christ, because He is coming. Jesus Himself boldly declared in the Book of Revelation several times, "Behold, I'm coming. I'm coming quickly, and my reward is with me." Amen and amen. Come on. All right, listen, I want to share with you all a particular headline concerning asteroids and tsunamis. Now, tsunamis really is what I want us to uh, just kind of highlight in this particular broadcast. Let me share with you the following article. Scientists have warned that a 400-foot tsunami could hit the East Coast if an asteroid hit the Atlantic Ocean. I find this a very fascinating report, especially in light of what the Bible has to say about floods in the last days. First, let me bring your attention to the book of Psalm chapter 107. Go there with me, please. If you don't have your Bible, just take a moment and grab it. If you haven't read it, it won't bite you. Not that I know of, anyway. <laughs> no, seriously, go ahead and get your word out and go with me to the book of Psalm chapter 107 because this is exactly what is happening. Uh, the signs of the times are all around us. The, the world is going through birth pains and tsunamis and floods are all part of end time biblical prophecy. It's all part of the signs that Jesus declared would take place before his second return. He said, listen, you're going to know the times and seasons. You're going to understand uh, the times uh, and, 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 and the changes that are going to take place. No different. Literally. Now please listen. He literally equates the end times or the signs of times as to a woman in labor and the types of changes that takes place to a woman, uh, you know, prior to the arrival of the child, you know, of, you know, of the baby before it comes into this world. No different than the second return of Jesus Christ and the birth pains, you know, again, signs that will take place, uh, you know, we are told that the seas and the waves will be roaring. The Gospel of Luke, chapter 21, verse 25. Men's hearts failing them from fear for the things that will be coming upon the earth. For the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Again, go with me to Psalm chapter 107 because I also want to read to you this portion of scripture. Let's read it in context here. Verse 23. Verse 23. Those who go down to the sea in ships who do business on great waters. They see the works of the Lord and his wonders in the deep. For he commands and raises the stormy wind, which lifts up the waves of the sea. So here we're being told that the Lord himself is the one who commands and raises the stormy wind, which he lifts up the waves of the sea. All right. So according to this report from the most important news.com, it says here, we live at a time when giant space rocks are whizzing past our planet. And listen, folks, we are here at Open Your Eyes, people. I've, I, you know, I've been directly reporting to you several uh, particular asteroid events that have already come very close to our planet within the past few months, you know, within the past few weeks alone. As a matter of fact, there was another report that came out this time from BreakingIsraelNews.com just three days ago. NASA missed a wave of asteroids. Uh, the report went very quickly that early last Tuesday, the 2020 OY4 asteroid passed within 26,000 miles of the Earth. 
Folks, that is terribly close. It's about 11% of the moon's distance. The asteroid was discovered a mere two days before its near miss, and NASA assured the public that there was no danger as the space rock was estimated to be 7 to 17 feet across. Now that, again, is one out of many reports that I've been sharing with you here within the past few weeks alone. But we are seeing giant space rocks whizzing past our planet with alarming regularity, and sometimes we know in advance that they are coming, and sometimes we don't. In fact, in July... July 28th, another report that came out that an asteroid the size of a car zipped past our planet at a range that rivals the orbits of some high-flying satellites. Again, that is terribly close. But we had only spotted it for the first time on July 26th. It just whizzed by two days after. If we couldn't see that one until it was nearly upon us, could it be possible that there were much larger potential threats hurtling toward our planet that we are you know, that we currently don't see or know nothing about. In 1998, a big Hollywood movie entitled Deep Impact imagined what would happen uh, if a very large asteroid actually hit the Atlantic Ocean. It's hard to believe that it has even been more than 20 years since it first came out, that particular movie. And, you know, if you've never even seen the movie, I'd highly recommend it. It's actually, uh, you, know, you know, quite an interesting movie concerning asteroids and uh, a very large, catastrophic, apocalyptic type of flood that, 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 that seeks to hit the planet. Uh, anyway, one of the most memorable scenes in the particular film, a massive tsunami that is hundreds of of feet tall slams into the east coast of the United States causing immense death and destruction. But that's just a movie, right? That came out back in 1998. Could something similar actually happen in today's time? The answer is, is, a, is, is, is yes. It's an absolute yes. On Tuesday, a British news source reminded us that scientists have discovered that such a scenario is actually a very real possibility. The report came out as follows. A computer simulation of an asteroid impact tsunami. Now I want to make sure I'm saying this very clearly. A computer simulation of an asteroid impact tsunami developed by scientists at the University of California, Santa Cruz, showed waves as high as 400 feet sweeping onto the Atlantic coast of the United States. Stephen Ward who is a researcher at the Institute of Geophysics and Planetary Physics at US or UCSC, and Eric Asfog, an associate professor of Earth Sciences, reported their findings in the Geophysical Journal International. Now, of course, an asteroid could potentially hit anywhere on this planet, but in their research, Ward and Asfog specifically focused on the Atlantic Ocean, and I believe they had probable reason to do so. What their computer simulation came up was extremely disconcerting. The simulation, the researchers chose an impact site consistent with the orientation of the Earth at the time of the, uh, of the, time of the predicted encounter in the Atlantic Ocean, about 360 miles from the U.S. East Coast. Dr. Ward explained that the 60,000 megaton blast of the impact could vaporize the asteroid and blow a cavity in the ocean 11 miles across and all the way down to the seafloor, which is about three miles deep at that point. Such an impact, I mean, you know, just think about this, my friends. Such an impact would send a series of massively gigantic waves in all directions, including toward the east coast of the United States of America. Now, today, almost 40% of the U.S. population lives in a county that directly borders a shoreline, New York City obviously being one of those major cities, we know, uh, a major metropolitan area. And the population density right along the East Coast is particularly dense. Florida, as another state, would probably be the first state to get hit by the waves, and it would be particularly vulnerable because most of the state is just barely above sea level. South Florida has two specific problems. The first is its remarkably flat topography. Half of the area that surrounds Miami, for instance, is less than five feet above sea level. Just five feet. Its highest natural elevation, a limestone ridge that runs from Palm Beach to just south of the city, averages a scantily 12 feet. With just three feet of sea level rise, more than a third of southern F Florida will literally vanish in mere seconds. At six feet, more than half will be gone. Now, if the sea actually rose 12 feet 
South Florida will be little more than an isolated archipelago surrounded by abandoned buildings and crumbling overpasses. And the waters won't just come in from the east, my friends, because the region is so flat, rising seas will literally come in nearly as fast from the west, too, through the Everglades. So in other words, there would be absolutely nothing to keep the tsunami waves from racing across the entire state of Florida alone. Now, of course, much of the, you know, much of, you know, much of the rest of the East Coast would be extremely vulnerable as well. For example, New York, New York City, to be specific, is less than 50 feet above sea level. Now, it's got seemingly a better chance in Florida, but despite having some of the tallest buildings in the world and being well known for its towers and, and the skyscrapers, New York City has a very low elevation of just 33 feet above sea level. New York's elevation is so low due to its location right on the east coast of the United States, Boston, New Haven, Jersey City, Newark, Atlantic City, Philadelphia, Virginia Beach, Wilmington, Myrtle Beach, Charleston, Savannah, and countless other East Coast cities are all less than 50 feet above sea level. Virtually the entire East Coast shoreline would be gone. The city's gone. So we're talking about the potential for death and destruction on a scale that is even unimaginable, my friends. Washington, D.C. is another city. It would fare a little bit better because some parts of the D.C. area are up to 410 feet above sea level. But Washington, D.C. is relatively flat and located at 410 feet above sea level at its highest point and at sea level at its lowest point. So a person would probably rather be in D.C. than New York or Boston when a gigantic tsunami hits, but without a doubt the devastation would be immense in our capital city as well. We should hope that such an event could be put off for as long as possible, but we have to understand the times we're living in. We have to understand that Bible prophecy decrees and declares that there will be flooding in catastrophic proportions. As a matter of fact, Jesus himself says the following. Go with me to the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 24. Now many may say, well, evangelist, I thought that God said he will never flood the earth again. Please understand that a tsunami is not flooding the entire earth, but it would cause catastrophe on a level that, again, would be unimaginable. It would be likened to the days of Noah. Read with me the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 24, verse 36. The words of Jesus Christ himself says the following, and I quote, But of that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, but my Father only. Talking about the second return of Jesus Christ. But then he says the following, But as the days of Noah were, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days before the flood... They were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark and did not know until the flood came and took them all away. So also will the coming of the Son of Man be. So here, again, we, you know, we should hope that such an event, tsunami, this massive tsunami that, you know, that again, is just, you know, they, they did a computer simulation in the East Coast that could cause a wave of up to 400 feet if it actually took place. We could hope that such an event could be put off for as long as possible, but we have been warned that our planet is apparently in the midst of an epic asteroid surge. It's, 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 it knows that we're living in the last days. NASA has been running these simulations for years, and with good reason, Earth, as it happens, is in the midst of an epic asteroid surge compared to the relatively peace and quiet the planet experienced many, million, you know, many millions of years ago. When unexpected space rocks do appear on our scopes, sometimes we only get hours notice of their existence, NASA says, before they even streak past. While the chances of a catastrophic impact of an asteroid are exceedingly slim, they claim, we're nonetheless unprepared for surprise asteroid strikes, which is why NASA is continually working on plans to help improve our NEO detection and mitigation capabilities. Now, it's still being discovered. Many asteroids are still being discovered all the time. And the one that was discovered on July 26, just about a week ago or so, was not a threat, but it did come alarmingly close to us. Again, a car-sized asteroid discovered over that weekend made a close flyby of Earth on July 28th, passing our planet at a range that rivals the orbits of some high-flying satellites. The asteroid 2020 OY4, which was first detected on Sunday, July 26, made its closest approach on July 28th, 1.38 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time, when it zipped by Earth at a speed of about 27,700 miles per hour. 
This is according to the European Space Agency. The asteroid, they claim, was just under 10 feet wide and posed no impact risk to the Earth at the time, but did approach the flight paths of geosynchronous satellites. Now, despite all of our advanced technology, we remain extremely vulnerable, and scientists assure us that it's just a matter of time before our luck runs out and a gigantic space rock does actually make direct impact to our planet. Now, we understand that we're living in the last days. Again, these are all signs of the times, Bible prophecy. I want to share with you some more specific scriptures concerning tsunamis or what the Bible says about it. Job chapter 9, verse 8. He alone spreads out the heavens, talking about God Almighty. He alone treads on the waves of the sea. Psalm chapter 65, verse 7. You who still the noise of the seas, the noise of their waves and the torment of the peoples. Psalm 89, verse 9. You rule the raging of the sea. When its waves rise, you still them. Folks, God is in charge. He is sovereign over all things that happen on this planet, whether good or or evil. Psalm chapter 93 verse 4, the Lord on high is mightier than the noise of many waters and the mighty waves of the sea. Psalm 107 verse 25, just as we read earlier, for he commands and raises a stormy wind which lifts up the waves of the sea. Isaiah chapter 48 verse 18, oh that you had heeded my commandments then your peace would have been like a river, and your righteousness like the waves of the sea. Isaiah chapter 51 verse 15, But I am the Lord your God, who divided the sea, whose waves roared, the Lord of hosts is his name. Now look at the prophecy, or look at the, at the portion of scripture, I should say, in Jeremiah chapter 5 verse 22. It's a direct word from the Lord through this prophet's mouth, and he says the following, Do you not fear me, says the Lord? Will you not tremble at my presence? Who have placed the sand as the bound of the sea by a perpetual degree, by a perpetual decree, that it cannot pass beyond it. And though its waves toss to and fro, yet they cannot prevail. Though they roar, yet they cannot pass over it. The Lord is clearly saying, how can you not fear me when you see the wondrous works that declare my power, that declare my glory, that declare my, 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 my deity, how I'm able to control all these things. How can you not fear me? And yet here we are, we're living in the last days where many people do not fear God, where many people are falling away from the faith. Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 35. Thus says the Lord who gives the sun for a light by day, the ordinances of the moon and the stars for a light by night, who disturbs the sea and its waves roar. The Lord of hosts is his name. Jeremiah chapter 51, verse 42. The sea has come up over Babylon. She is covered with the multitude of its waves. Zechariah chapter 10 verse 11, he shall pass through the sea with affliction and strike the waves of the sea. All the depths of the river shall dry up. Matthew chapter 8 verse 24, and suddenly a great tempest arose on the sea so that the boat was covered with the waves, but he was asleep. Talking about Jesus, he was able to calm the storm for the disciples who had no faith. The Lord said, where is your faith? Matthew chapter 14 verse 24. Uh, excuse me, Luke chapter 21, verse 25, the coming of the Son of Man. And there will be signs in the sun, in the moon, and in the stars, and on the earth the distress of nations with perplexity, the seas and the waves roaring. And Jude. Let's go with me specifically to Jude. I want to, I want to take you to a portion of Scripture. I want to read this particular verse in context. Jude is, is an epistle. It has no chapters, only verses. Is that small? And in verse 13, but again, I want to read it a bit in context. Let's read in verse 12. These are spots in your love feasts, talking about apostates. While they feast with you without fear, we were just reading about how the Lord asks, how can you not fear me when you see my great majesty, how I control the oceans, the massive bodies of water from overcoming the lands? 
While they feast with you without fear, serving only themselves, there are clouds without water, carried about by the winds, late autumn trees without fruit, twice dead, pulled up by the roots, raging waves of the sea, talking about these false prophets, these people who've gone apostate, foaming up their own shame, wandering stars for whom is reserved the blackness of the darkness forever. Folks, the catastrophes that are going to take place come the day of the Lord is going to be a time of great sorrow. And the Lord says that it will, it will, it will happen. It will happen. What manner of persons ought we to be knowing this? In righteousness and in holy conduct is, is, is the type of people we ought to be. Those that have fully submitted and surrendered their lives to Jesus Christ and who remain surrendered and submitted to the will of God. How many of you remember the Indonesia tsunami back in 2004? Many, many people around the world, millions of people around the world were stunned by the devastation that took place from that particular tsunami as a debris-laden tsunami rolled across the northeast coast of Japan. This catastrophe is remindful of the earthquake that triggered the Indonesian tsunami of 2004, which killed over 200,000 people. When key phrases in the Bible account of Noah's flood are properly translated, they tell how, uh, you know, you know how, how asteroids or even comets could impact, you know, these particular impacts from these space rocks could cause a tsunami, which in turn could cause floods. And, 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 and again, floods that the Bible prophesies in the Gospel of Luke chapter 21, verse 25. We're being warned of what will take place. And so as we're talking about these end-time biblical prophecies and scriptures, it is for us to make sure that we are, um, again, not only that we're saved, but that we're staying saved. And that we, we understand that this is a time of, of great reward, of great faith, that we're not to be overcome by evil, but we're to overcome evil with good. And as we see and note the times that we're living in, the signs that are all, all around us, that this is the time to decree and declare our faith in Christ Jesus to as many as we can, to our children, to our children's children, to as many as the Lord our God shall call. And that we remain steadfast in the faith of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Many people don't believe that we're living in the last days. Many people have... Um, twisted the scriptures to their own destruction. You actually have teachers, they claim to be Bible teachers, that claim that the days of Noah, it's not talking about the end times, it's talking about the great tsunami wave of blessing that's coming. No, my friends. That is clearly declaring a great time of tribulation and trial that will hit the planet. And it will be a great flood of dissipation, a great flood of deception. And it represents, again, the days of Noah. And during this time, we must make sure that we remain steadfast in Christ. We remain steadfast in our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. That as the seas and the waves roar, that as we're on the boat and it looks like we're going to be overcome by the tempest of the storm... And it seems like Jesus is asleep yet again, just like he was with the disciples on that boat. We can boldly say, the Lord is my helper. What shall I fear? Whom shall I fear? What can man do to me? What can this storm do to me? And we can please God by our faith. For without faith it is impossible to please him. For you must believe that he is. And that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. And, you know, I know right now people are going through storms in their own life. They have their own many floods taking place. And you, you probably are blaming Satan all day long. But the point is, is that I just shared with you many of the verses right now of how God is the one who's in charge of the raging waves in the sea. Both literally and symbolically, spiritually speaking, even in your own life. What manner of persons ought you to be knowing, wait a minute, God is sovereign over this. 
He may be controlling this. What manner of persons I ought? What manner of person am, am I to be right now, Lord? Have me to please you during this time of trial. And what does the Bible say? The book of James. Count it all joy when you fall into various trials and temptations. When you fall, in, in you know when your when when your boat of peace has hit some waves, and the sea has risen up, seeking to be a great noise in your life. Count it all joy when you fall into various trials and temptations, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. But you let patience have its perfect work so that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. Listen, Jesus said in this world you're going to have tribulation, especially in the last days. Perilous times are going to take place in the last days. We're warned about this in 2 Timothy chapter 3, starting in verse 1. But the Gospel of John, Jesus himself said, But be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. I'm the one who's steering it all. I'm the one who's at the wheel. Your position is to remain steadfast in faith, in my grace that I have bestowed upon you, in, in righteousness and in fear of the Lord, to remain steadfast in the Spirit of God, in the Word of God, speaking as the oracles of God, staying submitted unto the Lord God and Savior, Jesus Christ. And you will overcome any waves that seek to take you down, any, any tempest that would seek to drown you. Now again, we're living in, in the days of Noah. There will be great catastrophe. And when that, you know, if, if you're ever in a situation, just as I shared with you in the beginning of this broadcast, or, or you know, really the, you know, you know, the, you know, the, you know, the purpose of the broadcast was to share with you on, on the particular report of how scientists have been warning that a 400-foot tsunami could hit the East Coast if an asteroid hit the Atlantic Ocean. If you happen to be even in those areas where a devastating tsunami could hit, let it be that you're able to stand in the evil day, having done all to stand. Say, Lord, I finished my race. This must be the day that I finished my race. I'm going to stand, having done all to stand. I know that I did my best. I know that I gave my life to you, and I know that I, 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 I pressed. I pressed. And you're able to enter into heaven's gates with the joy of the Lord. And the Lord's able to say, well done, good and faithful servant. Come and enter into the joy of the Lord. You see, none of this needs to be fearful. Not with the spirit of fear. All of this could be done righteously and reverently with the fear of the Lord. When you have the fear of the Lord, it's the beginning of wisdom. And everything changes. No matter what. No matter what. Trials and tribulations. No matter what types of destructions will lay waste in these end times remember that god is good amen and amen listen i want to say thank you so much for tuning in to today's open your eyes people broadcast as always it is a privilege and a pleasure to bring to you all the word of god breaking world news headlines matching bible prophecy until the next broadcast uh, be blessed get in the word and be a student of the word and not just a hearer only come on very important you don't want to deceive yourself. Not in these end times where great deception is abounding. I want to invite you to visit my website, learn more about my ministry, learn more about who I am and what I've been doing here. We're actually celebrating 10 years of full-time evangelistic ministry here at Open Your Eyes People. Log on, visit us, learn more, www.openyoureyespeople.com, www.openyoureyespeople.com. I also want to invite you to help support the work of this end time ministry with a donation. Become a monthly partner. Become a monthly partner. It's so easy to help support the work that we get to do here and uh, just see what else God has planned for the next 10 years. Come on. We know we're living in the last days. And if you're not saved, get saved. Uh, thank you again. Listen, our mailing address is P.O. Box 218, Shirts, Texas 78154. All right, my friends. God richly bless you. Bye-bye.